Well, here we are, Psycho family back together. It's great. I remember when I got the call from Jerry, and it just sounded like fun, you know? I mean, I have such fun memories of the first three. The first Pirates film we started in September 2002, so we're nudging 13 years of being a kind of an extended family. I remember you. Coming into this again, it instantly you pick right up and, you know, try and make each other laugh in scenes. <laughs> there is a shorthand, I think, between us, and so it's pretty easy to get back in and pick it up where you left off. What could possibly go wrong? I felt it was like a surreal moment every day on this on this shoot because not only is it huge, but we're dealing with iconic elements that have meant so much to us growing up with this franchise and also with the actors, you know, having these characters around and being able to work with them. Come on! Ah! Ah! Jack! We meet again! All the Pirates movies are epic. We wanted this to feel just as grand. Joachim and Espen. I think it was fantastic of Jerry Bruckheimer to keep the franchise experimental on some level and to get two Scandi indie boys in was a very bold move and it's been a very rewarding one. Did you bring me a gift? That'll do. Cut. Cut, cut. Very good. Moving on. Our directors are very young and very energetic. They move the camera a lot. They use a lot of drones. It's a whole reinvention of the making of a Pirates movie, the way they approached it. What we try to do while we're developing the story and creating the characters is find ways to have connections to earlier stories. Time to race the dead. The storyline hide through to films that I love in order to tie it all together. Tell me why you seek the Trident. Brent was the first person I met to do with any of this. Who are you? Karina Schmidt! And we were naive on set. We were the young kids. We were in awe of all these incredible actors and producers and sets and things. So I think that really helped us understand our characters on this journey. What do you call? I think it's a fantastic mix of new characters. It makes me realize now I am the oldest person in the film. But the other character that's been most consistent, of course, is Jack. There'd be only room for one captain. Jack the monkey. You filthy beast. The things that are really great about pirates have remained the same and remained solid. But it's very interesting that we've moved on a generation. As we, the more regular characters, are getting slightly older, and we see a whole new generation of people. And it makes me feel very proud. What be our hip cap? We shall follow the stars, Master Gibbs. Just because you can't see something doesn't mean it's not there. Back to map. You have to find it. It's the only link to who I am. Who my father was. So we've both spent our lives searching for our fathers. Perhaps you and I are closer than you think. I've actually really enjoyed this press tour because it was so long ago that we shot that I'm starting to remember little stories and experiences and actually how amazing it was and how much fun we had and and that we'll never get that time again like it was so special of that moment um, and it's kind of all coming back to me now just like being around you and hearing your side of it all and like how you experienced it um, it, it's really great to be able to reflect on it and see that like, we can finally put it out there. People can yeah. finally see this thing that has been such a big part of our lives already. And also our story is so sort of similar, you mm. know, it's almost like we finished the movie and went, okay, so you go that way and have a yeah. baby. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to go this way and have a baby. Yeah. And then we'll come together we'll and promote the film. Yeah, babies. Yeah. Yeah. So, with all due respect, I have spent my life studying the myths of the sea. I know every legend and every curse. At the beginning of the process, I auditioned in uh, 
late 2014, I think. I auditioned a bunch of times, and then I finally met the directors, um, Espen and Yoakum. Did you meet them here in LA? I met them in Venice Beach. Oh, cool. And they explained, like, you know, what they were trying to do with the movie, and uh, they had their bottom of the ocean idea, and they're going to split the two oceans apart, and you know, had this crazy climactic action sequence in the coral. <laughs> I remember just thinking, this is wild. Yeah. And then I got cast and basically met you, like, mm -hmm. right at the start of in that weird, 2015. Like, warehouse thing and Jerry Bruckheimer's uh, studio. Is that what was. that was? Yeah, I don't know. Where I thought they office. just took me to like a warehouse somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> this is really random. Where are we? I think that really helped to audition with you because it felt like we were actually doing the scene. What were you told? What information were you given at the start? Nothing. Just the Nothing. scene? Nothing. Yeah. It was just those scenes. And I was told that those scenes weren't real, and they actually were. And I was given the scenes when we got there. So I hadn't even learnt them or anything. Oh, and really? I was, I was stressed. I was so nervous. And yet I had, like, 20 minutes downstairs to learn the scenes. And then I just was up there with you. I don't believe you're a coward. Please leave me, sister. I've risked my life to come here. To see if the rumors are true. Who are you? Tell me why you seek the trident. One of our first scenes together was where you were busting me out of jail, I think. Oh, yeah, 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 the, the, the um, hospital stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 definitely, yeah. Because um, I remember that outfit, that costume was one of my first costumes. Mm -hmm. um, and it was really hot in there. I remember we were both, like, sweating. That's right, yeah. And you were on that rickety bed that was not comfortable at all. And when the director said, in, in this next take, it'd be cool and funny if you, you know, stand on his crutch and you actually stood on my crutch. And I accidentally stood on your crutch. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Thank you. That was good. <laughs> I was doing my own stunts. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> We both met Johnny at the table read. I think that's when everyone met everyone, which was really nice, actually, because I, I got there a bit early. I remember it was Valentine's Day, and uh, everyone was really excited, and all the pirates were there together. So to see them suddenly, like, being professional and, like, <laughs> was clean, I was Gosh. like, oh, this is strange. Three, two, one, hit! And we were all kind of hanging out on the balcony and chatting, and waiting for Johnny to arrive and he walked in and he kind of greeted us all individually. I remember he like ran around the table saying hello to everyone. Um, and it was really nice. It was kind of like, we got straight into it. I feel like our banter really worked. We sat next to each other, which was good. We did. I was like, my buddy, my newbie. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I'm looking for a pirate, Captain Jack Sparrow. <sighs> well, today is your lucky day. As I just happen to be Captain Jack Sparrow. I remember being surprised about how in character he felt at that yeah, time. You know, yeah, yeah. He, he had his teeth in. Yeah, he did, he had the teeth in, you know, right, He had yeah. uh, little bits of costume that, you know, he ended up seeing on Jack Sparrow, the character. Yeah. Like he was slowly building him up. Yeah, yeah. like it took, you know, he's <laughs> kind of putting the armor back on. Yeah. It's cool. Johnny used to bring his, his guitar onto set. I remember hearing him in a little tent just strumming away and yeah. chilling out. And it's nice to see that kind of quiet side to him, I think. I just remember that Kevin, Kevin, Mr. Pirates of the Caribbean, Kevin Mr. McNally, Gibbs. Mr. Gibbs, um, yeah, taken, saying that he was going to take me under his wing, and uh, he was like, whatever you need, I know everything, and he really does. He knows absolutely everything. You take the captain's hat. There was a moment on set where we were discussing a line, I think I say, OK, and he pulled it up and he said, nope, that is not historically accurate. That is a modern word. And we've had problems with that before in the last movies. So you can't say that. No, and I was okay. like, oh, I mean, wow, <laughs> you know your stuff. Like, that's yeah. amazing. Um, what about you? Um, no one really took me under their wing, per se. But uh, I think we were all lucky in the sense that there was a lot of new characters and new creatives coming to this one. Um, yeah, we weren't the only ones. It yeah, like I always felt like welcomed and, and comforted, yeah, which yeah. was nice. I thought what was really cool about Jerry is how much he was actually on set. Like, he was there so much more than most producers I've ever mm -hmm. worked with. And it seems like he, he still enjoys the fun of filmmaking. Right. Like, it, it, it's an adventure for him. And he was there so much, which I found really, really cool. When I first met him, I was talking to him about Cairns and uh -huh. Queensland and where I come from. And I remember saying, you know, you have to shoot up in Cairns and uh -huh. the Sundays, and you know, this is where to shoot, and the Gold Coast is a great place to be. And I don't know if he already had those places in his oh, mind. Oh, but you didn't know that that's where we were actually going to be? No, I had no idea. I was just saying, like, mate, it's, you know, it's perfect to shoot in the Sundays. Whitehaven uh -huh. Beach is a great beach. I've been there as a kid. 
and it turns out we shot at Whitehaven Beach. And Amazing. We, we tried to shoot up in Cairns. I know they were thinking of it um, for a while, but they didn't due to I don't know what. But um, that would have been pretty wild. Oh, you yeah. could be the reason why we got to go. Maybe That's I have so to ask cool. him. I have to ask got him. Got to see the sure. Great Barrier Reef because of you. What was your favourite scene to shoot? Um, I really like the stuff at the end when we're up in the Sundays because it had been such a tough shoot and so long and everyone was so tired. And then we all kind of got on a flight and we ended up on this little paradise island and it felt like we were on vacation as a family. Yeah. And then the final scene we shot was us running up and down that beach at sunset with Johnny and Jeffrey and all the pirates. Mm. And um, I remember thinking this is such a great way to finish it off. Yeah. If this had been the first week, then we would have just been exhausted by the end. But to have that kind of lift and spirits right at the end. It's, it's coming! It's coming! I remember um, we had a scene where we could only do it once, you know, running on the beach. After yeah. that, the beach was ruined and oh, they yeah, couldn't, right. they couldn't yeah. reset it. I remember thinking, what a fantastic way to finish a movie, you mm -hmm. know, with one take. I remember thinking, like, this is it, you know. Mm -hmm. After this, we can't do it again. It's but, literally the finish line. Like, yeah. we're running towards the finish line. All right, guys, we put him through it from the very beginning. Brenton, all done, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Captain Jack yeah. got us. Johnny Depp, done with yeah. it. character of Salazar. I just had this image of a wounded bull. When they are on the arena, he's full of rage and kind of uh, the need of vengeance. But also he's wounded. And the way he walks and the way he moves the head and looks at the opponent, that's something that I want to bring into the character. What are you? The whole journey of Salazar and the crew is about revenge. It's about going back to the person who cursed him for all his death rather than life. And he has this fixation of going towards that man and really close the chapter of revenge. You take your time, you develop the characters, and now we have a bunch of new characters. And Salazar is one of the great villains of all time. Uh, Harvey Arbadem, there's, there's not a better actor. This pirate wishes to be cordial. So let me show you what my cordiality is. Hombre, every time I tap my sword, one of your men will die. So I suggest you speak quickly. I was a witness when, I, when they were shooting Pirates 4. Since Penelope was shooting the movie and I had the chance to be there on set and I loved the way everything unfolded in the sense that it was fun to watch. And then when Jerry Bruckheimer called me to join Pirates 5, uh, I was very excited about the idea. When Jerry told me that Javier's in, man, I was ecstatic, because I've worked with Javier before, and, and Javier definitely gives you something to, you know, to work with, to chew on, to think about. So you basically get into the ring together, and you're throwing things at each other to sort of uh, play, you know. To play. Do you remember me, Jack? Well, your voice has changed, but your breath is still the same. Other than that, I believe you have a gaping hole in your skull. <laughs> <laughs> one more, one more. Well, Javier is terrifying. His makeup, his hair, everything that Yoakum and Esmond have created with his character is very exciting and very interesting, great to look at, and also very frightening and creepy. He's not really a ghost in the traditional sense of the word, but I think that he's cursed to walk in some kind of a middle ground. And it was important for us to give that character depth. Follow him in. 
I just think he's uh, extraordinary and a very chameleon kind of actor. Yeah. Being on set with him was fantastic because he created a very intricate physicality for his character, who you have to believe is imprisoned under the sea for 25 years. I have heard stories of a mighty Spanish captain, El Matador del Mar, a man who scourged the sea, hunted and killed thousands of men. No, 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 men, no, no, no. Pirates, eh? It was great working with Javier Bardem because he brought something new to the table in his way of portraying the two different Salazars that we meet, the alive Salazar and the, and the dead Salazar. And he, he chose to play the uh, living Salazar as a matador and then the dead Salazar as the wounded bull. So that was his way of, of seeing uh, his arc and uh, it, it made for a really, really interesting character. Ready and action! I was very surprised about how open they were to the suggestions. I came to the set with some uh, ideas, uh, like this wounded bull, or the way he would walk, or, or talk, uh, and they, uh, they seemed to accept it very well. That made me feel like safe, like there was room for the creativity into the set. I think he's utterly terrifying. There's something about a villain who knows what they are doing and who is intelligent and conniving and has planned things out. You know, he's not just insane. He's out for vengeance. Um, and in his mind, he has every reason to do these things. The first time they talked to me uh, into the character, they were bringing this idea of the face uh, with a hole in it, <laughs> which I, it was hard for me to imagine. To, and then they, they throw some drawings uh, for me to, to take a look. And, and the concept of the herd came later. Part of the idea for Salazar and his crew was that on the day that they die inside the Devil's Triangle, the whole ship basically blows up. So their parts of their bodies are missing. So there's like negative space, but they could still, they can still walk around, but they can like miss part of their attire and limbs and some are even missing half their head. So it's quite brutal, but it's also with a little bit of fun that they're walking around, you know, with just uh, half a brain. <laughs> We had to create a look whereby they look like they'd been blown up. The ship gets blown up, we imagine they've got blown up. We want to do something physical, so we came up with this image of cracked earth. That was our basis for doing all this work. Well, it, it took me a little while to adjust to the time frame in the sense that it was, I think it was like around three hours, three hours, 30 minutes every day for the makeup which I'm kind of used to because I did this movie called The Sea Inside and it was five hours makeup every day. And uh, yeah, you have to be patient, that's all. This is a prosthetics that we've applied. As you can see, it's curling back and that to get this effect, to get this 3D effect. If you can see, look at the hands. These are all, they're all, this is all prosthetics. Now, of course, we can't do that to every single one because we'd be there forever. So this is the same look, but this is <clears throat> all done with stencils and transfers. All painted black, thinking that explosion, gunpowder, blast. Then, of course, we are going to be doing some CGI. For instance, on Salazar, you can see him with dots on his face, so that when we finally see him, all that side of his head will be actually blown off. There won't be anything there at all. They're caught between living and dead. They are dead, but they're still here. And we wanted to give them a ghost-like appearance. So, for example, their hair floats like it's underwater, and so does their wardrobe. And there are also pieces falling off them as they're moving around. The hair, as I said, I, I saw some drawings of it, but I didn't have the idea of how would that look actually on screen. So you have to have a leap of faith, so OK. And I like that idea because it's like a floating spirit, like uh, that also helped me to to bring more uh, thickness into 
the behavior of the character, knowing that there's something lighter going on. The underwater look for the ghosts, it was about kind of really selling this feeling that these characters were underwater, even though they weren't actually in under, underwater uh, in terms of where they were in, in space. So there were a few things that were done, uh, mainly in relation to the hair and to the cloth in terms of the movement and the flowiness of it, and making sure that we were striking the right balance of movement that was floaty, but not, uh, not feeling kind of awkward or, or strange. And I think we struck a, a good balance with it. In visual effects, one of the most important things for us to be able to give the directors was the ability to be able to dial up and dial, dial down the performance of the hair and the cloth and the way that it floated. What we did find very quickly, though, is that when you have an actor like Javier, who's giving such an amazingly strong performance, the last thing you want to do is step on that in any way. Spanish. So I would say that more often than not, we ended up dialing down the extreme, the extremities of the movement of the floating parts of their body, the, the cloth, the wounds, and the hair, um, in order not to take anything away from the, the face of the performance. You will soon pay for what you did to me. No, 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 no there's no need to bother, really. Karina! I have no time to chat because my map's just run away. I will be waiting for you. The wardrobe gives you a purpose as a character. The first time I saw it, I was amazed by the way Captain Salazar looked like. Like, okay, I like this guy. I like the way he dressed because he's always kind of proclaiming himself like a king. So that's the way he should look like. We went back to the costumes we'd used in P4 for those Spaniards. So we made him a captain in the Spanish army, but we wanted him to stand out. So I met with him with a kind of prototype, described it, and it's got a lot of braid, and it's long, and it's majestic looking, and he loved it, and so we went with that. Penny really wanted to use, um, you know, strong shoulders, clean lines to make um, that he's very fastidious, he's very impatient. She wanted to try to bring that into his costume. Um, this one is actually ghosted, so there's two different costumes. There's a clean version, and then this one is what we call a ghosted version. There's so much detail in this costume, and it's kind of hard to see because the one that I am showing you is ghosted. The silver embroidery, the beautiful silver buttons, the epaulets with the spaghetti. It's just a really beautiful costume. Silent Mary was huge. You walk around the ship and you see every detail, tiny detail of the, of the construction of the set is so well taken care of. It is amazing. And it's more than a set. It's something that really puts you in the mood. Uh, what I felt being on it is the sadness, the gray zone, the eternal pain that I always imagined my character and his crew are carrying for so many years because of the, the curse they're in. It's so beautifully done that everything, once we were there, it was an energy of being cursed on the sea. A few years ago, we saw an image of a ship that looked more like a skeleton than a ship, and it just floated across the water. And we built a whole sort of mythology and story around that. So Salazar's ship is supernatural. It's a ghost in the way that Salazar is a ghost. And it was very important for us to create characters out of the ships because there are so many of them, about 11, and you need to tell them apart. But it's also fun, you know, to create these. One thing we added was that it can actually open up and, and stuff like that. And that came from growing up a little bit with the Lego and the Playmobiles and the Transformers and kind of like having toys that you can change somehow. And so when we learned that they were making toys out of this, we were thinking, okay, we need to do something with this ship that we can add a layer to it. So that's how that came about. It needed to open up and almost um, open like a jar that could eat and attack other ships. Um, that required for us a lot of sort of development and detail work. The more we started working on this effect and started to bring it to life, the more we needed to kind of dress it up more with like seaweed and extra dangly sort of rigging and cannons that sort of had to hang around. And our crew characters, uh, ghost characters, needed to cling on to that boat as it was sort of performing and uh, attacking things. We've seen ghosts before in Pirates. However, these guys are pirate hunters. And the way Salathar directs his men is that of a captain. He was very mean, though very proper. 
and passionate about hunting pirates and being part of the Spanish Navy. And I thought that juxtaposition was perfect. There's a lot of dignity in his performance and a lot of honor. I think that what was important for us going into this uh, was to create a memorable villain. And that's why we felt so lucky when we got Javier Bardem. I've never done a movie this big, and uh, it's, it's an exercise of imagination. But you have to construct your own image and your own imagination and your own fiction and your own mind in order to try to make it become organic. And that's a, and a challenging exercise for an actor. Now, now, it's time to hunt a pirate. Good morning. I'm Kevin McNally, Mr. Gibbs from Pirates of the Caribbean. And today, we are filming Pirates of the Caribbean. Dead men tell no tales. Follow me. What's funny is that um, uh, I suppose I was a little too young when we started this to play Mr. Gibbs. So over the 13 years, I've had less and less makeup required until one day I won't actually need any makeup at all. <laughs> Tan, sunburn. And then... Muck and rubbish. Dirt. And then the, a bit of flicking tan as well. And to save money on uh, makeup, we get a little mud from the car park and we rub it in like that. See? And then we put some on the back. No, no, you can use what's there still. Go for it. Oh, and we're rationing the mud from the car park this morning. Get me some more mud from the car park. I grew my own mutton chops for uh, the first four films, but I didn't have time to grow them this time, so I was quite concerned that I'd look a bit different, but they're, I mean, they're indistinguishable from the real thing. They look fantastic. And actually, my own are completely white here, so I've got back a little bit of... Yeah. ...a little bit of dark <laughs> there. Done. One filthy pirate ready to roll. Thank you. You're very welcome. I'm ready! <laughs> I am one of only three people in the cast who've been in all five films, and that makes me feel pretty proud. But I also love that in each film we introduce new characters and the crew of this pirate's film has to be some of the most scraggly we've ever seen. Adam, Danny, come and say hello to your fans. We're looking a bit messy, we're not fully ready. Well, what do you expect? You're a pirate, you're looking a bit messy. We will no longer follow a captain without a ship. Did we not find the treasure of Macedonia together? It was a troll of rotten wood. He's got his teeth in, look. Lovely. Look at that. I can't wait to make them teeth. up. There is real teeth. There is real teeth. There are my How are you? teeth. Why have you got such... Oh, no, you haven't got such nice teeth. No, my teeth are just bad in general. Oh, no, it's terrible. It's your diet, mate. It's well, it's British. It's being British. <laughs> British teeth. So I make some new friends, but I still keep some of the old, tried and trusted ones, like my crusty old crewmate, Marty. Marty Clever, ladies and gentlemen. How long have we been doing this now? 13, 13 years. 13 years. Been with Captain Jack for over 20, right? Yeah, absolutely. In the story, it's been 20 years. I keep getting prettier. <laughs> it's been five years since Pirates 4, and coming back is a great feeling. It's that feeling you used to get after you went back to school after the summer holidays. We're just picking up where we left off. Hi, how you doing, guys? Yeah, Everyone looking good? Over the years, we've shot in the Bahamas, St. Vincent, Dominica, and Hawaii. But never before have we gone all the way to Australia. Here in Queensland, we've even recreated an entire Caribbean town. This is a fantastic set. Australia has great artisans, the people building this town that I'm standing in. It's so authentic, you think, I could live here if I was back in the 1700s. One of the great joys of this journey for me is my continuing friendships with people like Jerry Bruckheimer. Jerry has been instrumental in making these films what they are today. Great. Cut. Jochen and Espen are, are amazing Norwegian directors, and they bring a lot of style and a lot of flash to, to the pirate films. Let's go say hello to Espen, uh, one of our Vikings. Ladies morning. and gentlemen, Espen. Very good to see you. How are you doing this morning? I'm excellent. Yourself? Oh, I can't wait to get going on this scene. 
Working with our new directors uh, felt like a true collaboration. I loved the energy and unique perspective they brought to the Pirates world. Hello. Joachim, how are you? Good morning. This is our other Viking morning. director over here. Oh, you're hosting a TV yeah. show? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Morning. Well, I've got to make uh, up the money somehow. Yeah, you know? exactly. Although we do nice, intimate little acting scenes in Pirates, this is one of the big days. We have seven cameras working, two long lens, two crash box, the handheld, crane up on the roof there of the bank, and the drone in the sky. It's a fun little start to, uh, to start our Monday morning off. What can possibly go wrong? It's going to be great. I'm always amazed that it comes together because we have something like 500 people here, all doing their different jobs. We got a lot of equipment, obviously this huge set. The horses changed running style up on board. Yes, they went from uh, trot to canter. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I guess the moment they canter... That's what I'll start. That's yeah, OK, thing. great. <laughs> that's great. Isn't that fun? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. It looks really good. I think we have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's move on. Great. Great Excellent. Great Thank work. you. Thank you, buddy. What I love about Gibbs is that even when he's not at the center of the action, he's usually working on a plan to save the day, like here in Executioner Square. Once again, I saved Jack's neck. This is the uh, guillotine up here, where Jack's gonna be beheaded. Guillotine. Sounds French. All of the French. Did you know that they invented mayonnaise? Fortunately, me and the pirate crew have got a cannon, our swords and our guns, and we do a pretty good job of routing the British soldiers. For Brenton Thwaites, who joins us as the next generation of pirates, doing his own stunts was a big part of the appeal. Okay. I kind of realized halfway through the scene that I was writing stunnings. I should probably take them off to finish off this scene, I think. It's a big one. I'm just a diversion. Fire! Reload! So when it's fired, was that loud enough? Yeah, yeah it was great. Yeah. <laughs> I was acting all butch, and then I went, like that. Yeah. <laughs> it was very loud. Yeah. <laughs> so boom, and then you, sh you should start, you know, aiming it for the stance. OK, so good. Martin, Let's go. <laughs> This is Thomas Dupont, our master swordsman, who's been well, teaching me uh, how to sword fight. It's been going pretty well, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, it's been quite easy teaching someone who was already perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it's always fun playing pirates. But uh, I think I'm coming just to the end of my ability to sword fight at the full tilt. We won't pay more than ten! <laughs> I'm feeling every one of my <laughs> nine years. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. Really right. appreciate it. Good You're making an old man look very good. <laughs> every time he's in trouble, I'm always here for him. And is he grateful? No. It's not grateful at all. Knew you'd come crawling back, traitor. The Turner boy gave us ten silver pieces to save your neck. It's pretty sad. <laughs> oh, this is such a relief. They start to get really itchy in the square. Thanks. Yeah. It doesn't fully do it, but it's a start. Now, this is the nicest bit, the hot towel. Ah, oh, that's better. Ta-da! <laughs> and here we are, wrapped on another day of pirate's history. I'm lucky that Gibbs has remained so loyal to Captain Jack because it's given me the opportunity to be part of another great adventure. Mr. Gibbs, you may throw my hat if you like. Aye, aye, Captain. Hooray! <laughs> now go and get it. This movie has more big action set pieces than we've ever done before. Drop them! 
Drop them! We wanted to surprise by creating new action, more original big scenes that you've never seen before. There's a shark attack, which is one of the most entertaining sequences ever filmed for a pirate's movie. The ghost sharks actually came from Jeff Nathanson. It was in the script that they got attacked by ghost sharks. That was one of the great, fun sequences to design. And also, it reminds us a little bit about our previous film, Contiki, because we had a lot of sharks in that movie. But they are, of course, not ghost sharks, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I guess we're shark, shark experts or something. So. Yeah. <laughs> Kill this parro. Salazar has control over these lifeless sharks, and they bring them back to life and send them out. The idea was that these ghost sharks were almost like like missiles that were launched from the ship, so they were pushed off the side of the boat like torpedoes, so that they fire directly towards our heroes. And they send them on a rampage towards my direction, which is unpleasant. For the sharks itself, we'd use various breeds, actually. We settled on one hammerhead and two great whites, so essentially there's a group of three that are released into the water. In the beginning of the design process, we wanted to kind of follow up on that, you know, decayed flesh and visible bones and skeletons, you know, as a mashup. The sharks were essentially fully realized, real objects on set, and then we did digital takeovers of them. We ended up breaking their jaws, having their jaws dangle, slime coming out of the mouth, and then we added flies around them to make sure that it had that added sense of disgust. We just really wanted to combine this sort of menacing appearance to like a real, believable, convincing behavior of them underwater. We did a lot of animation studies to try to figure out how broken you can make something look and still keep it threatening. If you have a shark that's been dead and that has missing fins or broken fins and only chunks of flesh here and there, it's not going to be as elegant as a shark would be if you were to encounter it in nature. Shark. In the chase with the ghost sharks, where they're pursuing the, the rowboat, we shot part of that in a location where we were adding the island to the background. Then we had a small water tank location with a rowboat on a gimbal for direct interaction with people in water. We then did another environment where we shot it in a blue screen stage in an interior. So within that sequence, you might be cutting from a location to a tank shot to a blue screen set, all in a matter of a few seconds. And our job was to try to make sure that we were creating the CG water and the, the CG ocean extensions around it to match the live action location well enough that it blends. We kind of have the best of both worlds. We have the digital portion at hand, and we have the practical stuff that was shot on set. In each of these shots, it's always a combination. It depends on what works best. The Pirates franchise has carried the supernatural and mythological elements right through the first one, so it wouldn't be a Pirates movie without it. How's it going? Can't complain, really. You? I've been waiting all morning in here for a beating, but the service is terrible. Shame. I'm cut. <laughs> Paul McCartney is, is an icon. He's one of the greatest musicians, songwriters, performers um, alive. And we're very fortunate that he is friends with Johnny, and, and Johnny has done favors for him, and so. He's returned a favor to Johnny by being in this movie. It's not, don't listen to a word he says, it's not true. No, I think we actually met in Hebrew school, wasn't it? Oh, well, yeah. I, I am actually his rabbi. And I'm a moil. You do a little bit of acting on the side. This way. I do a bit of music, you know, Friday nights. Yeah, only on Friday nights. <laughs> I've known Johnny a while, you know, I always admired him as Jack Sparrow. 
And uh, he said, you know, I'd love you to be in, in the next one. I said, what, me, pirate? He says, yeah, you could do it, have a lot of fun. So he roped me in. It was good. Jackie boy! How's it going? I'm loving it. Yeah, I'm loving it. I mean, you know, it's Gray Jones. He's done me a lot of favors in the past. He's been in some of my music videos. So, you know, this is a, a way of repaying him. Paul McCartney was a dream to work with. He knew all his lines, he was funny. Very he, used to cameras. Yeah, I mean, and <laughs> it was such a sacred moment almost, you know, playing with him. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think win with this one. <laughs> My character is Jack's uncle, who he was named after. And uh, I'm an old pirate awaiting execution, just like he is. It runs in the family, I'm afraid to say. The oceans have turned to blood. Better stay on dry land where it's safe. I'm about to be executed on dry land. Good point. I started telling him about my Liverpool relatives and I centered on this Uncle Jack of mine. He said, well, yeah, channel Uncle Jack, you know. So I told him a few stories. He said he always used to tell jokes. Jack was the family joke teller. And then last night before filming, we had a little meeting, a little bit to eat and a bit of wine and it kicked it around. Johnny came up with a load of ideas. I, you know, spun off it and I thought, okay, he's going to bed, he must be tired and everything. But he immediately went back, he typed the whole thing up and he had it all as a script this morning. I was very impressed. Did I ever tell you the one about the skeleton? Yes, you have many times. The skeleton goes into a bar, orders a beer and a mop. <laughs> Funny as ever. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Mm. Oh, if they disembowel you, ask for Victor. He's got the softest hands. Thank you. And mention my name, they won't cut your feet off. <laughs> he's killing it. He's killing it and he's killing me. I don't, I don't belong in the scene anymore. How much singing do you want exactly. to do? Exactly. The most emotional moment of that day shooting with him was that in the scene, in the beginning of the scene, he, he sits and he sings the song. Yeah, a little old Liverpool yeah. song. Maggie, Maggie May, they have taken her away. So great. And at the end of the day, we needed what is called the wild take of that. Here we go, guys. Quiet. As quiet as we can on the stage, please. So basically, everyone goes quiet in the studio. So it's a couple of hundred people, but it's all quiet. And, you know, we sit with our headsets and then we have Paul McCartney singing his song. So we're basically recording Paul McCartney. Oh, Maggie, Maggie May, they have taken her away. And she never walked down Lime Street anymore. To judge she guilty found her for robbing a homeward bound her. That dirty no good Robin Maggie May. Good. <laughs> It's just part of, of this adventure for us as filmmakers. And, uh, you know, Jack Sparrow's family tree is, is pretty cool, you know, having Keith Richards as his dad and Paul McCartney as his uncle. <laughs> Mr. Gibbs, come. We have our headache. Pirates of the Caribbean reminds us of the kind of movies that we grew up with. They're so funny and so inventive and so big. They are movies that made us want to become filmmakers, basically. I was 14 when the first one came out. If you wanted to go escape for a little bit, that's what you'd watch. And I was also completely obsessed with Orlando Bloom when I was 14 years old, so I watched them a lot. <laughs> you cheated. Pirate. When we were doing the first one, pirate movies were like the plague, you know? People ran from them, and, and Jerry and Gore and Johnny with Disney took a real gamble to make something spectacular out of it. Welcome to the Caribbean, though. I first saw the first one I think I must have been about 
13 or 14. In the moment when Jeffrey Rush is coming out of the um, bottom of the stairs in the boat and he says, you better start believing in ghost stories, Miss Terry. You're in one. I love that part. And ever since then, I've dreamt of acting on a Pirates film. When we did the first film, I think everyone assumed it was a one-off. But we noticed maybe in the last week of shooting, it was suddenly called Pirates of the Caribbean, colon, the curse of the Black Pearl. And we all went, the colon just said sequels. Take what you can, give nothing back. The enduring quality of Pirates is certainly a great deal to do with the incredible creation that Johnny Depp came up with with Jack Sparrow. You are without doubt the worst pirate I've ever heard of. But you have heard of me. Johnny Depp is just the best. He's the epitome of, of a great character and was, I think, voted the, one of the number one movie characters of all time. I wanted to find a character that could appeal to five-year-olds, to 85-year-olds. There's a purity to Jack. And because of his irreverence, he is able to get away with things that we'd love to be able to get away with. You're mad. Thank goodness for that, because if I wasn't, this would probably never work. No matter how down and out and crazy and in trouble, he always seems to land on his feet. And that was without even a single drop of rum. But also, the glorious villain that is Jeffrey Rush. Playing Barbosa, the appeal was finding something inside here or here that was so far away from my own personality. He's a ruthless old bastard, you know. All hands, fly to windward! Get crack on your bloomin' cockroaches! <laughs> the lack of consideration that pirates have for others, it's sort of a freedom I guess we wish we all had, that we weren't constrained uh, by manners. I'm Captain Jack Sparrow. He's heavy. Then you add in the ships and the supernatural elements that we always bring to it, I think it's something that, you know, you, you don't see anywhere else. You want audiences to come to the Pirates movie for the humor, humanity. It's also great storytelling with great characters. And that is the excitement of what we bring to the screen. These wonderful characters caught up in this magical, fantastic world.